Aim High, Four, by Paul Kelly and Susan Iannuzzi, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2010. CD One, Unit One, Page Five, Read, Exercise Two, Read and listen to the text. Making the internet work for you. Although the internet has only been in existence for about 25 years, it is now an essential part of many people's lives. In some countries, the internet has spread almost as fast as the telephone did when it was first introduced. So why has the internet become an indispensable tool for many students and businesses, and a source of entertainment for millions of users around the planet? The internet is sometimes referred to as the information superhighway. It rapidly transports users to sites around the globe that can help them carry out a task or research. Students have never had it easier, and with the click of a button, they can browse the online material of institutions as diverse as the Library in Alexandria, the British Museum in London, or the Louvre Museum in Paris. Online encyclopedias and dictionaries. Specialized websites and online newspaper archives all contribute to providing an enormous virtual library. It is a vast educational resource that no conventional library can compete with. The internet has also created new opportunities for businesses, especially in the fields of advertising and sales. It is also very practical for the customer. A shopping trip in the past often meant a time-consuming visit to lots of shops, searching for what you wanted and at a reasonable price. Not any more. You can now browse the shelves of lots of online shops from the comfort of your own home in the same time it takes you to visit just one real shop. You can even visit websites that allow you to compare the prices of the same product at various online stores. Shopping for books. DVDs and CDs has never been easier, and quick delivery also means that you rarely have to wait long to receive what you've ordered. Despite its short history, the internet has been evolving constantly. With the latest internet technology, users can visit social networking sites and access and share material with high-quality sound and images. This has revolutionized home entertainment. Music and films can be bought and quickly downloaded, and many radio stations and TV channels have also made their programs available to be streamed at any time. Furthermore, users can download podcasts of everything from films to university lectures, and watch or listen to them when and where they want. However, although the internet is continually growing, not everyone thinks it is for the better. In a book about the internet, expert Andrew Keen says the dramatic increase in websites and blogs has made it more and more difficult to find quality material. There is no directory to help us find good sites, so we often have to read a lot of poor quality material before we find something useful. It is therefore essential that we accept the recommendations made by teachers and experts about the sites we should visit. In this way, we can learn to establish our own criteria for deciding what makes a website good or bad, and hopefully, the internet will continue to be an excellent source of useful information and entertainment. Unit One, Page Eight, Listen, Exercises One and Two. Listen to a radio program about Hikikomori. Good evening. Tonight we're going to hear about something that is worrying adults in Japan: the hikikomori. What or who are hikikomori? We sent reporter Steve Martin to find out. Hi, Mike. Well, I discovered that hikikomori are young Japanese people, usually boys. They're between the ages of fifteen and thirty, and they refuse to leave their bedrooms. Many people are blaming this unusual situation on the internet. But I think you can hear parents all over the world complaining that their children spend too much time on their computers. Well, in Japan, it's much more than spending an evening in front of the computer screen. 
In some cases, Hikikomori have spent up to 15 years in their bedrooms without coming out. That's a long time to be online. What about school or their work? Hikikomori have dropped out of school. They sleep all day and only come out of their rooms to go to the bathroom or kitchen when the rest of the family has gone to work or bed. They spend all night on their computers and play games, write blogs, or contact other Hikikomori on the internet. And how many people does this situation affect? Some estimates say that 10% of young men are Hikikomori, and it is considered a big problem. And how long has this problem been around for? The first cases were noticed at the beginning of the 90s. At that time, there was a big growth in the use of personal computers and the internet. But really, it's a problem that has only developed in Japan. Why is that? Well, Japanese school children are under a lot of pressure to succeed at school. After school, they often do four extra hours of study at special cramming schools. Then they do tests at the weekends. Unfortunately, some children can't handle the pressure and fall behind. It's the first step to becoming a hikikomori. I see. So, to sum up, it's not really the fault of the internet. No, it isn't. But the internet means staying in your bedroom all the time isn't as boring as it might be. Well, thank you, Steve, for that interesting report. Next on the program, we're going to talk about. Unit one, page nine. Explore. Exercise one. Read and listen to the dialogue. Have you finished your project yet? Yes, I have. I wrote about the impact of new communication technology on society, and what people say about new inventions. For example, is writing a good thing? <laughs> of course. Well, when people started writing two thousand years ago. The ancient Greeks said they'd lose the ability to remember things if they wrote them down. Since then, every new system of communication has been criticised for being ridiculous or dangerous, like the internet. Exactly. When the internet first became widely available in the 1990s, a lot of people just talked about the negative aspects of it. But there's always a good side and a bad side to new inventions. Unit one, page eleven, language skills, exercise one. Listen and check. Hi, Matt. What are you looking at? A few long articles for school. It takes ages to find useful information. It's really time-consuming and boring. You haven't switched on the computer to study, have you? It's Friday evening. Well, I was ill last week and I missed a few lessons. I've got an essay to hand in next week. Don't worry, you can borrow my notes. We've been studying hard all week. I think we need to look at something more entertaining. You're right. I've been browsing these websites since lunchtime. What do you want to look at? Well, Manchester City and Liverpool played last night. Let's look at the goals. It was a two-all draw. It was a great game. I was listening to it on the radio while I was studying. It was live on the radio. Yes, the game was streamed on the internet. What? You didn't tell me. I thought you were busy. I was, but I can cram four hours study into two hours to make space for a football match. Everyday English one, teacher's book, page one hundred. Getting help with IT queries, exercise one. Read and listen to the dialogue. Victor, can you spare a moment? Yes. What's up? Will you tell me how to upload a video onto this website? All right. First, you need to go to your profile. I'm already there. Good. So, click on the Photos tab at the top of the screen, and some icons will come up. Here they are. Click on the video icon, and choose one of the options that comes up next. Okay. I want to upload a video from my computer, so I'll click on that. Right. Now click on the button to browse the files on your computer and find the video you want. Got it. Now what do I do?、Uh, click on the button that says Share and wait for the video to load. It's very easy. Yes, it is really. Thanks a lot. Everyday English one, teacher's book. 
Page 102. Getting help with IT queries. Exercise 4. Listen and repeat. 1. Can you give me a hand? 2. Would you help me download this song? 3. Will you explain something to me? 4. Could you show me how to use this application? Everyday English 1. Teacher's Book. Page 102. Getting help with IT queries. Exercises 5 and 6. Listen to the dialogues. Dialogue 1. Lucy, have you got a minute? Yes. What do you want? Will you show me how to change the photo on my profile? Sure, it's easy. First, you have to pass the cursor over your photo to get the change picture message. Do I click on the message? Yes, click on it and then a window will open with two options. Upload a picture or choose from your album. That's right. Choose the option you want and then browse your files to find a photo. Right, I've done it. Now click on the message that says, make this your profile photo. OK, and then I click on the OK button, right? Oh, great, <laughs> it's worked. What do you think of my new photo? Dialogue 2 Rob, are you busy? A bit. Why? I want to write to Jack, but I don't want everyone to read it on his profile. Well, you'll have to send him a message then. How do I do that? It isn't that hard. Go to your home page and click on Jack's photo. That will open his profile. OK. Then click on the option that says send Jack a message. Right. A window will open where you can write your message. Here it is. Then I write the message in the box, right? That's right. And then all you have to do is click on send and Jack will get the message. Thanks a lot.